Hello and welcome back to Open Everyone. Our next guest has uh, more than 12 years experience as one of the nation's leading mortgage experts. Even in the midst of the country's struggling economy, she has proven to help her clients overcome and get on top of their mortgage loans. As author of the book, How to Get Approved for the Best Mortgage Without Sticking a Fork in Your Eye, she became number one on Amazon in both mortgage books and buying and selling homes. Here now to share her knowledge with us is uh, Alicia Stope. Hello and welcome. Thanks for having me. I, I you know, I, I was uh, in your introduction. I started thinking about how Walter was saying we need to actually learn how to own, and so I thought it was a great segue into this segment because um, I'll be honest, I, I am a, a renter, and I don't think I've ever really, really considered um, owning and. Uh, if we could just start just from the place of somebody being a first timer and what the proper preparation is in to begin even, I guess, qualifying for a loan. Sure. Great, 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 great place to start. Uh, there are many first time home buyer programs available. The book was actually written for first time home buyers, so it's perfect. Uh, I try to write it in layman terms and not speak too much mortgagees and just make it easy for people. So there's a lot of information in the book. One of the things that people should start with is their credit. You need a decent credit score and the credit score is actually derived from what's in the credit report and some of those things need to be cleaned up or some people need some help establishing lines of credit. So one of the places people can go for free is annualcreditreport.com. Everybody's allowed to get a copy of their credit report from each of the three bureaus every year. So it's a great way for people to go themselves and see what's on their credit. There could be things on there that people don't even know might be on there, medical collections, things like that. Right, like that's something that you're supposed to do annually just to make sure that things don't present themselves that have been overlooked, right? Because they affect your, your FICO score, right? Exactly. And your FICO score. What is What qualifies someone, right? right I, I still don't fully grasp FICO scores either. Like what are these numbers? So there's basically three main companies that gr uh, gather data on credit, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And they're huge repositories that gather this information and put it all together, and they all have different scoring models. Each of them have a different scoring model, each of the, uh, the entities. And then in addition, they have different models of the score, so it's very complicated. But basically, each one comes up with a score based on your past credit history. So for example, 10%, about 10% of your credit score is derived from how long you've had credit. So if you are, have lines of credit that have been open for a longer time and you've paid them on time, that actually contributes positively to your score. Uh, so things if you have, it um, uh, could be a credit card, department store uh, line of credit, and you pay those on time, that's all going to be good for your credit score. If you don't pay at all or you don't pay on time, those are going to impact your score in a negative way. How do you build it, though? How do you build uh, your FICO score? just saying, oh, I overlooked the payment and it hindered my <laughs> credit rating. Right. So the nice thing about credit is that it's a fluid thing. So say, for example, if you just had a late payment on your credit score, on your, on your credit uh, card, the longer you pay on time and the more time you have away from that, the better it'll be for your credit score. So that's a way to bring it up. If you open a line of credit and use some of it, but not all of it, that's also really good for your credit too. They consider that responsible use of credit. Not, not maxing out to the limit, that's a negative thing. Paying down your, uh, your credit ba card balances is also positive as well. So is that like written in a manual format in, in this book? Some of that's in there, yep. It's yeah. available on Amazon. Um, it's actually free right now. The uh, ebook just came out. So if people have Amazon Prime or Kindle Unlimited, it's free. Otherwise, it's two ninety nine. So how does one get approved for a mortgage? There are several steps. Uh, some uh, mortgage loans require a down payment. Some don't. So say, for example, if if you are generous enough to serve in the military, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, if, if, uh, so those, those loans actually have zero down payment requirements. And some of the interesting things along with that type of loan is the seller can actually pay for 
some or all of your closing costs, depending on how it's set up in your sales contract and negotiated by your realtor. So you, there are opportunities that you don't have to have a down payment in order to purchase a home. Wow, so veterans, that's, yes. that's really good to know. And so what are um, some of the, I guess, the monumental mistakes that uh, people can avoid uh, when it comes to finances? Great question. So the three monumental mortgage mistakes, uh, I kind of boiled them down to, or one is not getting pre-approved. So some people get excited, they see that, you know, like you see something shiny and new and they go out and they start shopping for uh, real estate. And the challenge is, if you haven't been pre-approved, you may be shopping in the wrong price range. You may not have everything lined up that you need to to actually close. And once you're under contract between home inspections and appraisals, you can write a check out of pocket before closing, usually around you know seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. So getting pre-approved can help you not make that mistake. Um, the second thing is once you get a pre-approved, the licensed loan officer should present you with your options as far as what you qualify for a loan, whether it's the VA loan or there's FHA loans or conventional loans, different types of loans. And knowing what those are and what your options are and your down payment is very helpful. And then the last but not least one would be um, knowing how to set up the, the structure of your sales contract and talking about that with the realtor because different loans allow for the seller to pay for different closing costs for you. So like with the VA, they could pay for, the seller can pay for all of your closing costs. With an FHA, it's capped at 6%. With a conventional loan, that's capped at 3%. So that also factors into saving you money. Why would you pay for closing costs when the seller can pay for it for you? Interesting. Wow, this is a lot. I mean, I, I, sh I feel like I should be sitting here <laughs> taking notes. No, it's very interesting Thank because you. the the points that you're making are very, very valid and, and for somebody like myself who's never really considered uh, owning a home, but we're being Basically, what I'm getting from what you're saying is like, you know, maybe don't go too high. Maybe just find a, mod a moderate sized house that, you know, with moderate costs so that you can get approved. And the important thing is make sure you're comfortable with the payment. Right. That's the most important thing. Right. And then um, with regards to uh, getting a, a lender, like who, how do you seek that? Like, who, how do you qualify them and how do you know that you're in good hands? Excellent question. So you can go to Zillow. Or Trulia, they have ratings on all the the lenders as well as realtors. That's important to consider too. With the lenders, we uh, I suggest that people look for five star reviews. And on Zillow, they actually screen. I I, can't, I couldn't say, hey, we're gonna go to Zillow and hook me up and give me a review. It actually has to be one of that lender's past customers, so they're all valid. Uh, questions like, do you have referral? Do you have references? Is a great question to ask lender. Uh, what's your closing? Percentage. So of all the people that come to you, of those that get under contract, how many of them close? Actually, over 50% of mortgages in this country that are started do not close. Hmm. So that's really important to ask because you want to know how good your lender is. Are they right. really giving you accurate information? Are they really looking at your loan application thoroughly so that once you write that contract, you actually get the house? Nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for, for taking the time to come visit us here. I know you just flew in from Florida, right? Thank you, And yes. uh, you fly around a lot and actually uh, do speaking engagements regarding this. And that's wonderful. It's wonderful that you're actually out there sharing this knowledge with the uh, the entire United States. Thank you. I want to try and help as many people as possible. Why is this so important to you? I've been in the industry a long time and I see the heartbreak when people fall in love with that house and and they don't get it it's 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 crushing to them and then i also see the joy at the closing table when people do get the house that they want and that they've worked so hard for and they're so impassioned about actually succeeding and it's a huge thing in america it's the dream american dream of home ownership so anything I can do to help empower people. Well, we appreciate it. And thank you for sharing all the technicalities because there's a lot of technicalities <laughs> sure. in getting sure. it done. We, we try to make it simple. There's checklists and downloads and in the available book. in the book. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you here. for having me. A pleasure. Alicia, right? Alicia. Alicia. And uh, once again, for more on Alicia and her book, How to Get a Proof for the Best Mortgage Without Sticking a Fork in Your Eye, <laughs> visit bestmortgagebook.info. We do have to take a quick break. When we return, Bobby C. gives us the latest in the world of sports. Don't go anywhere.